Marshall controls the tap. And the thundering herd moves it into the front court. East Tennessee opens up in a man-to-man. Very seldom do you see them play anything else, Dave, but they will get after you full court. We expect to see a little bit of matchup zone from the Buccaneers tonight. We'll see how the game develops. Loose ball on the court. Jones has it. And here come the Buccaneers. Robert Doggett will run the show, the transfer from Wake Forest. And right away, Tony Patterson called for the offensive foul. Patterson got in foul trouble the other night against New Mexico State, and it really impacted the way East Tennessee State looked at the rest of the ball game. There's one thing Alan LaForce does not need. He does not need Tony Patterson sitting by him on the bench. He's got to have him in there. At 6'9", Marshall's got a definite size advantage. East Tennessee State 5-8, and 2-0 and in the league. Inside, Wes Harden has a shot blocked. He goes right back to the offensive glass and puts it back in. Great upper body strength and control that time by Wes Harden, who just stayed after it. They tried to take the ball away from him down low because they're so quick. Great job by Harden. Marshall, seven, rather four and seven overall, two and two in the Southern Conference. Heard coming off back-to-back -back road losses in the league at UTC and Western Carolina. Marshall tries the double team. Trezell Silvers with the, the dish, and the shot is up by Jeff Herman. No good. And the Buccaneers will control the basketball. And there's an indication of one of the problems East Tennessee State is having, as we see Alan LaForce. East Tennessee State just does not shoot the basketball very well. They're not. And they have also had a problem with getting passing the ball, too. They have not had any chemistry. But their coaches seem to think that they're coming around a little bit. They played awfully well, even though they lost by six at New Mexico State. Doggett rims out of three. We'll see a lot of three-point attempts tonight from East Tennessee State. Marshall wants to push it up the court. Malik Hightower, the junior from Pittsburgh, tries to get the pass inside to Troy Gray, and it's stolen away by Daryl Jones. Doggett, nobody steps up to take him, dishes it to Herman, another three. And East Tennessee State has their first lead of the game tonight, 3-2 at the 18-20 mark of the first half. Jeff Herman can light it up. He's a transfer from Austin P, and he was one of the top three-point shooters in the Ohio Valley Conference as a freshman three years ago. Hightower picks up the dribble into the paint to Harden. He backs in and is called for the travel. Dwight Freeman, the fourth-year head coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd, felt that one of the problems the other night for Wes Harden, he was not aggressive enough in the paint. He wants Harden to force his way to the basket. He does not have any problems with Harden picking up a few offensive fouls. He wants him to go in strong. He went in strong and played very well in the first half against UT Chattanooga, but the Moccasins made some adjustments, and he was pretty quiet in that second half. Jones off the baseline. No good. Herman in among the trees, able to garner the offensive rebound. Silver's up top. Into the paint, and he is hammered by Sean Moore. So Silver's will go to the free throw line. And that is an area, another area, where East Tennessee State has not excelled this year. You, you'll notice a lot of teams are struggling from the free throw line as we look at this one again. Drizel Silvers with a nice move into the lane, and they just gang him right there. And he's going to draw two shots, which is not really bad if you're Marshall because he's hitting only 50%. That's just a little bit worse than what they're shooting as a team. They're shooting 56.2% as a team. And a lot of the coaches, Dave, contribute that to the fact they have two less weeks to work now in the, in the preseason. And a lot of their time is spent on learning the offense, learning the defensive schemes, and they're not spending as much time shooting free throws. Plus, they're, they're held to 20 hours a week in practice, too. East Tennessee State dead last in free throw percentage. That is hard to believe when you think about the outstanding shooters they've had in Johnson City over the past few years. Yeah, Jennings, Talford, Story. Do we need to go any further? And Pelfrey, he's an, uh, an assistant coach now for Allen LaForce on the bench at East Tennessee State. Tink Brown quickly into the front court, loses the handle momentarily back to Hightower, and Marshall will start their offense again. Wes Harden on the high post. And Silvers, who leads the Southern Conference in steals, comes up with a basketball, takes it strong to the hole, and scores it. Rizal Silvers showed you just why they consider him to be one of the best athletes in this league, and we're going to take another look. Watch him move on Hightower. He goes straight to the hole. Now, Hightower really would like to get out of the way here, but not in time. And what that does, as we look at it from the floor level, is give Trezell Silvers another shot at a three-point play. Silver is averaging over three steals a game. East Tennessee State averaging 11 steals a game. Both of those tops in the league. And Silvers appears to be 
on course for a big night. He played very well the other night in Las Cruces, New Mexico against the New Mexico State Aggies. Came up with 24 points and seven rebounds before he had to leave the game in the final minute with a concussion. And Silvers again with another steal. It's a uh, check that, that's Jones. Jones takes it to the bucket, puts it in off the window with the right hand. And Dwight Freeman wants a timeout at the 17.09 mark of the first period. East Tennessee State bolting out to an early lead on the home court of the Marshall Thundering Herd. We've talked about a lot of things the Buccaneers have not been doing well, but one thing is their full court defense, which we talked about at the top. We saw it a moment ago with a steal by Silvers and this one by Jones, and the Buccaneers are getting those points off turnovers that we talked about that was so crucial to them at the beginning of the ballgame tonight. Darrell Jones, that's uh, five points just like that that they got <laughs> off steals. And they're uh, they're going to be ro road warriors in the next few days, aren't they? Four of their next five Southern Conference games on the road. Then they have to come home to play UT Chattanooga. And Marshall will play six of their next seven games away from the Henderson Center. So both these teams back in the bags. Tink Brown slices to the bucket, puts it off the glass, no good. And Darrell Jones clears the boards for East Tennessee State. Silvers wants to push it up court. Gets control of the hoop and fires no good. Offensive board put back up and in by Tony Patterson. That wasn't a, a matter of getting position. That ball just bounced right back into the hands of Tony Patterson. He said, no, I believe I'll shoot it. Sean Moore picks up the dribble. East Tennessee State contesting every pass. They do a good job of cutting off the passing lanes, but, but they can't do much with that, can they? <laughs> no. Troy Gray fires in a three. Gray, very impressive the other night, starting in place of Sean Moore at 14 points against Western Carolina, one of the few bright spots on what turned out to be a very long night in Cullowee for the Herd. In the paint, Terrell Silvers practically uncontested with the bucket. It's 13 to 5. Uncontested is a good word right there because Marshall has not been contesting many of East Tennessee's shots. It's almost like they're letting them shoot but the Bucks have been hitting them tonight there's a difference defense has been a problem for the Hurts Sean Moore misses the jam gets his own rebound flips it back up and in Marshall dead last in defense in the Southern Conference giving up 85 points a game 13 to 7 Heard within six 15 and a half to go first half Dave Weekly and Randy Smith from the Henderson Center in Huntington. The runner by Herman is no good. Marshall breaks back quickly. Harden with the pass to Tink Brown into the front court. No good. Hurd tries to control the offensive board. Stripped away, and East Tennessee State will have it. There's another example of those very quick hands of East Tennessee. A big man does it. You don't want to bring the ball down if you get it because those little guys, water bugs, as Norm Sloan used to call them, they'll slap the ball away from you. The scouting report on East Tennessee State, Randy, says that they don't block out very well under the basket, and that was a good example of that. Look at all the green shirts, green and white shirts. They keep it alive real well right here, but watch this. He brings it down. That's a mistake because Robert Doggett knocked it right out of his hands. Doggett, the dish, and the three up and no good by Corey Johnson. And Marshall will get the basketball. Keep your eye, if you can, on the cat quick Corey Johnson, 5'9", freshman from Hardin County High School in Savannah, Tennessee. He can really put up the threes if you give him a chance. He put up some quick numbers. Scored 72 points in one game as a high school senior last year. 68 in another, 65 in another. Great, great shooter. Set the national high school record with 253 three-pointers in his career. Not a real good foul by Trezell Silvers because he really had no position and nothing to do. It was kind of a reaching, uh, useless foul. Coaches hate to see those. Tank Brown into the backcourt. Brown playing with a heavy heart tonight. He lost his father, James, earlier this week. Sean Moore, the pull up off the dribble. No good. Silvers skies for the board. Here comes East Tennessee State back the other way quickly. And Johnson. We told you he likes to get to the bucket, misses, but Phil Powell is there to tap it in. Justin McClellan has also checked into the lineup for East Tennessee State. Allen LaForce will go with quite a few players. Marshall does not have that luxury. More on that in a moment. Moore out of control, misses. Johnson tries to control it, and Sean Moore had it. Doggett finally gets control. Too strong. Powell the offensive board for the Bucks. 
Doggett gets a good look at a three. Misses more of the rebound. Some of the same problems beginning to plague East Tennessee. The, you know, they're wide open, but they're still missing some of those shots. They're hitting under 30% of their threes right now. But here's what's keeping them in the game, their defense. Another steal for East Tennessee State. Silvers called for the travel. John Brailsford has checked into the lineup for the Thundering Herd, the only senior on that squad. Malik Hightower returns, and Shadid Perkins also into the lineup for East Tennessee State, as Sean Moore will take a seat. Curtis Raymond, another junior college transfer, also in now for the Marshall Thundering Herd, East Tennessee State. Picking the Thundering Herd up at the locker room door. Look at those quick hands. They're all over the place, aren't they? Hightower wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Alan LaForce tells Corey Johnson, you know, you're pushing him, you can't do that. Just, just keep your hands off of him. Stay in front of him. Watch this. He fights his way through the pick pretty well, but then he pushes him when he gets by. Someone else would have been there to pick him up. That's a, that's a freshman mistake. Dwight Freeman in his fourth year on the bench for the Marshall Thundering Herd looking on. East Tennessee State with an early eight-point lead at 15 to 7, 13, 30 to go. First half from Huntington. Tink Brown still complaining to Duke Etzel a little bit, saying that Corey still got his hands on him. Look at Silvers again. Another steal by Silvers. Johnson out of control, lets it go. Pow is there for the offensive rebound. East Tennessee doing everything right right now, building a 10-point lead, and Marshall's doing a lot of standing around, not going to the ball. Got a foul away from the basketball, and the foul will be whistled on Phil Powell. Phil Powell is one of those several players for Alan LaForce. Dave has really played well coming off the bench. Justin McClellan is another. As you mentioned, they have a lot of players they'll run in and out. And Marshall, with the loss of Stuff Lynch and Frank Martin, going to be hurting a little bit depth wise. We take a look at the foul again. Lob inside. Athletic move by Troy Gray. The lob off the inbounds pass by Malik Hightower. Gray was able to control it and get it to go off the window. 17-9. McClellan. And that Marshall defense just is not there. Nobody helped out that time. Gray overplayed the ball that time and left uh, McClellan wide open for the jump shot. Nobody picked him up. Railsford puts it on the floor, takes it in strong, cannot get it to go, but he will go to the free throw line. The 6'8 senior from Miami, Florida. Railsford, a lot of strength. You're going to see it right here. Powell cuts him off and McClellan in there. That's Powell. And he got Powell in the mouth that time by Brailsford as we take another look. Brailsford, when he comes in, you better get out of his way or you better be as big as he is. He's going to hurt you. Sean Brailsford, a 57% free throw shooter. Good form on the first. Marshall is a team, pretty good shooting basketball team for the most part. 43% total field goals, free throws 66%, about 35% of their three. Malik Hightower gets the rebound off the missed free throw and puts it back up and in. Hightower averaging 14 points again. Good ball movement that time by East Tennessee State. And out of the corner, it's Junior Floyd with a three-pointer. And East Tennessee State with a 10-point lead. Quickly back the other way. Troy Gray can't get it to go. Gets his own offensive rebound. Ball's loose inside. Curtis Raymond trying to control it. Brailsford forces it up and in, and he will be called on the offensive foul. Crowd didn't like that one, but East Tennessee State continues to scrap for that basketball. And Brailsford came up and just went strong to the basket, but the Buccaneers had great presence to him and also a good position right there to draw that charge. Just like that, it's a 10-point lead again when the, the herd had it to seven a moment ago. Johnson eyes a three, air ball. Powell tries to save it inside, can't do it. 
East Tennessee State dominating the early action Southern Conference basketball tonight. Buccaneers lead the herd by 10. We're going to take a look at one thing we talked about earlier about Marshall standing around on defense. Now here we watch Gray go for the steal, overplays him, and nobody picks him up. Nobody picks up Justin McClellan who pops in the jump shot. Plays like that have led to East Tennessee's 10-point lead. As you look at the shooting percentages, 47%. Not really that great, but Marshall hitting just uh, less than 40%, 5 of 13. Your shots are going to go in if you don't contest them, and that's something that Dwight Freeman is probably going to have a prayer meeting with him about. <laughs> Marshall shot just 32% for the game the other night in Cullowee and losing to Western Carolina. Lob inside to Brailsford. Turns, puts it in, count it. He'll go to the line. That time, Brailsford used great body control did not want to did not draw the foul that time but he drew the foul from East Tennessee let's watch him post up when you're this big you can do that and the guy guarding him is not nearly as big all Powell could do was foul him the ball went in and Brailsford's back with a chance at three and Tony Patterson and a whole bunch of other Buccaneers will come into the lineup oh they're running them in and out of there aren't they wow five guys check in for East Tennessee State Powell will take a seat he's got three fouls East Tennessee State with 16 fouls the herd with three at this point. Brailsford will go to the line and try to convert the three-point play. Doggett, Silvers, Jones, Patterson, all check back in. Jeff Herman also back in for East Tennessee State. Marshall picked up the tempo, but on defense, Gray was, able, out help him. Gray was able to get a hold of that basketball now. Big Tony Patterson causes the steal, and the Hurt takes it right back. High tower for three. Doggett controls the rebound. Amalik had the shot a moment ago, but it just would not fall. He was wide open on the transition. East Tennessee had a four-on-one break as we look at Gray go off the floor. Might have hurt his hand in that big pileup a moment ago. Michael Peck checks into the lineup. The junior forward from Jefferson City, Tennessee is in. And Troy Green in obvious pain. Appears to have a wrist injury from the outside. Three-point attempt, no good. Good offensive board by Patterson, who dishes it off to Silvers. He can't hit the three. Peck controls the board, and Marshall throws it away again. Herman for three. Three, three misses in a row for East Tennessee State. In a game earlier this season, Randy, East Tennessee State fired up 41 threes in a game against Marquette. As Alan LaForce said, we ever learned to hit him, we'll be in great shape. And Herman nearly took the basketball away from Tink Brown as Brown went strong to the bucket. East Tennessee is so quick and athletic. They could be the best full-court defensive team in this league, and they're showing that tonight. They're, they're, they built this lead day because of their defense, not because of their shooting. 22-15, Hurd trying to break into that lead, and Curtis Raymond just throws the ball away. Here come the Buccaneers. Long bounce pass intercepted. Loose ball picked up by Patterson. The dish to Clark, no good. Patterson misses once, but the second time is the charm for the 6'10 junior center from Knox Central High School in Flat Lick, Kentucky. They stayed after it. Marshall continuing not to do a real good job blocking out on the boards. East Tennessee's Patterson got three shots at it. Jones all over Peck. Peck loses it. Doggett what falls loose hustle. on the ground. What great hustle by both teams. Doggett stepped on the end line. Hurd gets it back. We've had some wild scrambling action here in the first half. East Tennessee State just really, well, our statisticians will tell us they have seven offensive rebounds, which shows you they're hustling. But you didn't have to look at stats to see how they're hustling because both these teams really went after it big time on the floor a moment ago. Coaches love to see that. 9.54 in the first half. East Tennessee State leads Marshall by 9, 24-15. East Tennessee State will be in Southern Conference play for the remainder of the season right up to the tournament. They finished the non-conference portion of their regular season schedule at just 1-8 pass into Brailsford blocked from behind by Patterson and they will whistle him for the personal Brailsford and Patterson really going at it underneath I don't know if we can get that whole sequence again but watch right here here watch Brailsford not, he knocked Patterson down now watch Patterson he reacts very well comes from behind and blocks the ball 
but he also got a good part of Brailsford's arm. So Brailsford, who's had a good half coming off the bench, goes back to the line for two shots. Good news for Marshall fans. Troy Gray is back in. Michael Pack will take a seat. And Patterson, with those two fouls, will take a seat next to Alan LaForce on the East Tennessee State bench. That's two fouls on Tony Patterson. And like we said earlier, he's not going to do Alan LaForce any good sitting over there by it. He needs him on the floor. And he is prone to be in foul trouble. He is a frustrating player for Alan LaForce. If he could put 40 solid minutes together, he could really be an outstanding player. Brailsford, just a 50% free throw shooter, makes a pair. Marshall back to within seven. Silver is the pull-up out of the traffic. Gets it to go. Again, good ball movement by East Tennessee, who really had some problems in the early part of the year, but face it, they played a tough schedule. Moore looks inside. Gray posting up. Nice pass inside to Gray, but he missed the easy shot. Got his own offensive rebound. A third attempt. No good. And Troy Gray will go to the free throw line. He's frustrated. Felt he should have made the basket. Great hustle by Gray. Might have had a might have been fouled right there. Might have been fouled about three times right there. But the last one's what counts, and Gray goes to the line. A lot of contact. They're letting them play tonight. Gray just a 47% free throw shooter. Far off the mark. And the thundering herd will get a break. That one skipped off uh, one of the Buccaneers' hands and out of bounds, so that's a big break for Marshall right there. Marshall in the bonus, in the one-and-one. One. East Tennessee's gone to a zone. As I told you earlier, they won't play zone much, but they will from time to time just to confuse you. Tower can't get it to go. McClellan blocks out nicely and gets the rebound off to Herman. McClellan, the pull-up, got it. An 11-point edge for East Tennessee State, their largest of the first half, at the 8.30 mark of the first half. Where earlier East Tennessee, Dave, was using a lot of full-court man-to-man pressure. Now they're dropping completely back, setting up in a 2-3 zone. And you can see Marshall, they recognize the defense. Oh, and Malik Hightower called for the offensive foul. I was going to mention that Marshall has recognized the zone of East Tennessee State. They want to whip the ball cross-court and try to get some open shots if they can. Official was kind of delayed. He, did, he might not have seen it. He still doesn't call that foul until Hightower turns around and looks at him. Then he blows his whistle. Hightower with two fouls will take a seat. Doug Sheppy steps into the lineup. Marshall tried to go with a three-guard offense the other night in Cullowee against Western Carolina. Had very limited success in that game. Sheppy just three of 16 from the field. Gray overplays Prezell Silvers, and Gray gets a personal foul, but that's a hustling foul. Let's take another look. Kind of went after the ball a little bit and got tangled up in Trezell Silvers' arms. That's only the 15th foul, though, against Marshall here in this half. Silvers triggers it into Doggett. East Tennessee State into the offense. And you can see Marshall has turned up the heat defensively. Sheppy all over Doggett, and he's whistled for the personal. Sheppy didn't give him a lot of room right there. It was kind of like a one of those, uh, what do they call boa constrictors. <laughs> Every time he, he gave an inch, Sheppy was right there to take it back away from him. Team foul number six on the Thundering Herd. Sean Brailsford will take a seat momentarily. Wes Harden back into the lineup for the green and white of the Marshall Thundering Herd. Marshall four and one at home thus far this season, but they are trailing now. Nice block from behind by Sean Moore. Sheppy. Bird all over the offensive glass, and Gray gets it to go on the putback. Much better intensity on the defensive end of the floor by Marshall that trip down. Great defense.
McClellan in traffic, off the window, no good. Harden controls the rebound. Gray takes it baseline. A few moments ago, Marshall wasn't really contesting any shot East Tennessee put up. They've really contested the last two, and they've come down and scored, and they've made it a seven-point ball game. Hurd's the key. Hurd needs a stop on the defensive end. They pull to within seven. Leslie Braun goes baseline around Harden, and Wes Harden is whistled for the personal. There's the foul. Harden really did a good job the last trip down, taking up a lot of space in the middle and forcing the defense, uh, forcing McClellan to take a bad shot. At that time, he just simply could not handle Brun, who's 6'7", about 240. And Brun will go to the line with two shots. Hits the first. Brun, a sophomore from Elizabethton High School in Elizabethton, Tennessee, just made the short trip over to Johnson City to play for East Tennessee State. Alan LaForce trying to incorporate six new faces on this team this season. 6.59 to go in the first half. East Tennessee State continues to lead the herd by nine. We wish we could take a look at some of the, the, the plays defensively Marshall was making earlier. They weren't contesting anything. Now watch them contest this one. Sean Moore from behind with a block, and it leads to the outlet pass. Marshall gets two points. Big Wes Harden keys it with a quick outlet up the floor, and here come the herd. And Gray finishes it off on the other end with a nice jump shot. Defensive intensity has been the key to Marshall getting back in it, but still the Bucks lead by nine. Marshall on the offense. Harden whips it back outside to Tink Brown. Brown tries to force it inside. Didn't have much room for that pass to Curtis Raymond. Did get it through. Three-point attempt by Moore, partially blocked by Justin McClellan, and East Tennessee State will take control of the basketball, and this rather small but vocal crowd at the Henderson Center really lets the trio of referees have it. Well, they call the charge on Wes Harden. Let's take a look, and we need to see Trezell Silver's feet. That was a good call. It was a good call. Harden crowd didn't now. like it. <laughs> Not a bit. Harden now with two personals. He'll stay in. From the outside, Floyd with a three. No good. Sean Moore unable to control the basketball, and the Bucks will stay at this end. 6.21 to go, first half. East Tennessee State by nine over the Marshall Thundering Herd. Buccaneers with the basketball. Doggett, the pull-up. 25-footer, couldn't get it to go. Floyd tries to control the rebound, can't do it, stepped on the end line. I don't think Doggett's hit a three-pointer yet tonight, but he's put up at least four. East Tennessee prior to that shot, 12 of 28, 43%. Marshall, 8 of 21, 38%. Shooting percentages have not changed that much. Doggett is 0 for 5 from the three-point line. I'm just not used to seeing all these tall players for East Tennessee State when you think about Mr. Jennings and Jason Niblett and Eric Palmer. They, well, they, had to, they had to order new uniforms for all these guys. <laughs> yeah, they? I'm sure they did. But they're not Corey Johnson because he looks a lot like Eric Palmer and he's about the same size. Moore with the air ball off the baseline. Harden controls the rebound, puts it home. He'll go to the free throw line. Great job by Wes Harden. And what really made that play great was not the fact he got the rebound and shot it, but he avoided the foul he made a moment ago. Let's take a look. There's the rebound. He just kind of weaved his way in between Junior Floyd and Justin McClellan and got the bucket. Let's take another look. Great second and third effort to get the rebound by Harden, but I guess when you're seven feet, you can do that. Harden did a nice job not putting the basketball down, kept it up near the basket and banged it in off the glass. Harden, the transfer from Ole Miss, cannot convert the three-point play, but Marshall, two within seven, inside of six minutes to go in the first half. 
One thing we've noticed when you talk about Wes Harden and the rest of this league is the fact that a lot of teams now in the Southern Conference are getting the big 6'10", 6'11", 7-foot player. Chattanooga's got a good one in Roger Smith that you saw. Nice look inside by Silvers, able to get the basketball to McClellan for the bucket. Bucks have come back to the zone. Sheppy on the baseline. Curtis Raymond with a nice feed inside to Moore. He missed it, but Harden put the home, put home the rebound. Harden is keeping Marshall close right here with just great hustle on the boards and great putbacks. Whoa, nothing but net for Junior Floyd. That's his second three tonight. He's only averaging three points a game. Lead is 10 now for the Buccaneers. They've led by as many as 11 here in the first half. Brown takes it to the, to the hole. No good. Sheppy chases it down. And Corey Johnson's all over Sean Moore. Moore into the paint, and Johnson will be whistled on the personal. Jeff Herman's going to come in, and I assume he's coming in for Corey Johnson. There's the look. There's a little slap foul by Corey Johnson on the hands by Sean Moore. Moore is going to draw two shots, and Wes Harden gets a nice hand as he sits down. That big fella played well. Good minutes for Wes Harden. Moore hits the first of two. East Tennessee State now with 10 fouls here in the first half, so Marshall is in the double bonus. Throughout the remainder of the first half, Marshall will shoot two at every foul opportunity. Moore makes a pair. Cuts East Tennessee State's lead to eight. Gray goes for the steal, nearly had it. Now the ball is knocked away momentarily. Chased back down by Perkins. Silvers hits again. Great ball movement by the Buccaneers, something that they were not getting earlier in the year. They now seem to have found that synchronization that they needed on offense. Curtis Raymond looking inside, trying to get it to his junior college teammate, Troy Gray. They came to, to Marshall together, and it's another foul on the Buccaneers. We're going to take another look. Again, aggressive defense by East Tennessee State. They go for the steals. They cut off those passing lanes. And Shaheed Perkins got in the way, but got his hand on the on Sheppy. Raymond leaves the lineup. Harden will return. You know, a lot of the Marshall fans have seen this East Tennessee State kind of team come into this town dominating the Southern Conference for the last five years. They finished second last year. They've won 19 games, but the general feeling is, Dave, that this team is more athletic and deeper than the team that won 19 and finished second for UTC in the league last year. 3.51 to go in the first half. Sheppy with one of two from the line. East Tennessee State continues to lead it 37-28 over the thundering herd of Marshall. Silver's having quite a game for East Tennessee State. He's in there. He'll bring the ball in. He's got 13. McClellan off the bench with six, and Tony Patterson has four. They have really spread the wealth out uh, for East Tennessee State. Gray off the bench for Marshall has nine. Brailsford has eight. So the bench is uh, really contributing for both these ball clubs. Yeah, Sean Brailsford doubling his per-game average here in the first half alone. Doug Sheppy will be whistled for the personal. One-and-one one situation will put the Buccaneers on the line. Sheppy really aggressive, and he went after Shaheed Perkins, and actually it wasn't much of a foul there except his feet got tangled up with Perkins as he tried to make the cut. Tripped him accidentally. Second foul on Sheppy, by the way. Perkins just a 30% free throw shooter. Looked good that time. Nice form. East Tennessee has done a good job from the line tonight. Helps his average by sinking a pair. Buccaneers know that if Davidson could somehow knock off UTC tonight down in Chattanooga, they'd be in first place if they went here. Davidson's really been a big surprise in the Southern Conference thus far. Big 
non-conference wins over Clemson, North Carolina, Charlotte, NC State, in Raleigh. Off the baseline, no good. Harden with the putback. Nice tap by Wes Harden. You couldn't keep Harden off the bench or off the uh, playing floor too long on the bench. What I've tried to say, he has really done a good job, and he's back in the ball game and got another big bucket. Under three minutes to go in the first half from the outside. Ooh. We get a look at the form of Corey Johnson. You can understand why he scored so many points in his high school career. Tank Brown the fall away, and both teams really beginning to heat up. Randy Smith, the key to the first half, had to be so many steals by East Tennessee State in the early moments of the game as the Buccaneers built their big lead. Well, we knew that's part of their game plan. When you when you don't have a powerful inside game and you haven't been shooting well, you've got to press full court and get those quick buckets. But tonight, they're shooting well. Shahid Perkins with the bucket. East Tennessee State has its biggest lead, a dozen points at 44-32. <laughs> Sean Moore is called on the offensive foul. You know, a lot of people don't consider that when you talk about great defensive plays. There, here's one right here, and it doesn't involve a steal or a block shot. It's just great defensive positioning. Maybe a little acting, too, by Trezell <laughs> Silvers, but it worked. Silvers could be the best defensive player in this league. 217 to go in the first half. East Tennessee State up a dozen. They have the basketball. Some long faces on that thundering hurt bench right now. It doesn't get any easier for Marshall. They'll play at Georgia Southern Saturday, then at the Citadel on Monday night before they take on West Virginia University in Charleston next Wednesday night. Marshall with Southern Conference wins already this season in Huntington over the likes of Davidson and Appalachian State. Trailing East Tennessee State as we get close to halftime by a dozen. You talk about Davidson winning some big non-conference games. The whole league has done awfully well. In fact, the Southern Conference going into this week's action rated 15th in the country among all the conferences. That's pretty darn good. Chattanooga had a big win at Alabama, which knocked off Arkansas. So arguably, a lot of people in Chattanooga think that'll be number one, right? <laughs> Southern Conference rated 15th in the new RPI poll ahead of leagues like the Missouri Valley, the West Coast Conference, the Sun Belt. And Trezell Silvers, he had a, a nosebleed problem the other night against New Mexico State, cropping up again. Probably at a high altitude, you think? <laughs> Maybe it, that's when he got popped by Wes Harden on one of those uh, charging fouls on Harden earlier in the half. Tower trying to avoid that third foul if he can before halftime and Wes Harden will go back to the free throw line. Darrell Jones whistled on the personal. One more point about the RPI index after we take a look at the replay of the foul. Wes Harden is hard to defend when he takes that seven foot frame and comes up in the middle like that. The only way you can stop him is to foul him, which they did. Wright Waters, the commissioner of the Southern Conference, wanted this league to play tougher non-conference games early in the season. They went out and did that. In fact, as far as the RPI strength of schedule standings are concerned, Davidson, fourth toughest schedule in the nation to this point in the season, UTC seventh, and Appalachian State 15th. And Davidson's 8-2, and two, and the Mocs were 9-2 and two coming into tonight's game. So they got some great basketball in this league, but of course, you and I have been around this league a long time. We knew that a long time ago. Moore, Moore able to get into the passing lane, deflected the pass off Darrell Jones, and Marshall's got the basketball back. 90 seconds to go, heard with the ball, trailing by 10. Be good for Marshall, Dave, if they could get that lead to single digits before halftime. This is a big trip for them. Take Brown, tough luck shot. Darrell Jones, the rebound. Up ahead of the pack, cherry picking it. Corey Johnson lays it up and in. When you don't get the basket, you've still got to get back and play defense, and they let Corey Johnson get past them for an easy two. That was a big, big trip. Marshall nearly had the hoop, would have cut it to eight. Meanwhile, East Tennessee State gets the fast break basket. It's a dozen point lead now. East Tennessee State in transition again. Look at Johnson to feed the Silvers. Thrown out of there by Sean Moore. Good play by Team Brown, bouncing it off. Shaheed Perkins, great play though by Sean Moore. It came out of nowhere and blocked that shot by Darrell Jones. East Tennessee wanted goaltending, but I believe that ball was still going up. Let's take a look. Great feed from Johnson. Silver's not Darrell Jones, but they got it going up, I believe. Good play by Moore. Down to 30 
seconds in the first half. 20 seconds on the shot clock. East Tennessee just really all over the ball. Their, their, their hands are in every passing lane in their face. It's hard to do anything with that. Harden flashes in the paint. Fall away. Won't get it. Hightower tries to control the board. Harden puts it up. No good. Called for the personal is Harden. And that's a big one. He's tough got three break. now. That's a tough break for Wes Harden, who played so well. And it helped Marshall really stay close with great hustle like this. But there he is. There's that guy. Trezell Silvers has, what, three steals? And he's drawn at least three charging fouls in this game. You know, Jim Donnan, the head football coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd, is in attendance tonight. Maybe he's making some mental notes about <laughs> using Wes Harden as a big blocking tight end. Ten seconds to go in the first half. Shot clock is off. East Tennessee State leads by a dozen. Doggett's got to make something happen. Silvers gets a good look at a three. Hits it at the buzzer. And East Tennessee State leaves the court with lots of momentum, not to mention a 15-point lead. Buccaneers 49, thundering her 34. big change that was Marshall hitting just one of eight three-point attempts in the first half they have just not found the range East Tennessee really hitting only 29 percent but they've hit five of 17 I guess when you put enough of them up Dave they they're not bashful they're going to go in Bucks with the basketball as we start the second half Doggett with it Marshall in a zone trying to cool East Tennessee State off Doggett for three bang finally got one to go he was 0 for 5 outside the arc in the first half buries his first three try the second half East Tennessee State now with its biggest lead 18 points just underway here in the second half Randy Smith and Dave Weekly with you from the Henderson Center I guess it goes without saying this is the most important time of the ball game for Marshall they've got to get back in it now if they want to make a serious run later in the second half. Nice job by Gray as he penetrates all the way in to get the bucket. Gray had a nice first half with nine. He's got 11 now. Harden has to be careful. He's got three personals. Patterson with a miss. Buccaneers control. And then Silver stepped on the inbound line with 19.01 to go. Marshall's down 16 as they get set to come back up the floor. Again, the Buccaneers putting that pressure on that led to 15 turnovers in the first half. Silver's clearly on the end line. Malik Hightower pretty quiet for the most part in the first half. Doggett's guarding him now. Herman was guarding him earlier. Gray for three. Way off the mark. Silver's with a rebound. That's not his shot. Great pass. Silver's to Patterson. He's fouled by Gray and Tony Patterson will get two shots. East Tennessee State, frankly, Randy, just beat Marshall back down the court. Here's another look. You got to like a big man that can run the floor, and Tony Patterson can do that despite that bad left knee. If you're Marshall, you've got to take control in the first few minutes of the half when you're down 15. They haven't been able to do that. In fact, they're losing ground. Patterson hits these two. The lead again would be, uh, what, 16. 16 now would be 18. Boy, it's a good night at the free throw line for East Tennessee State. They came in dead last in the Southern Conference, made all but one of their free throw attempts in the first half. Patterson. A 36% free throw shooter drains a pair. Again, the Bucks putting pressure on in the backcourt. Tink Brown gets it into the front court now for the Thundering Herd. 18 point East Tennessee State lead. Here's Hightower. He'll fire up a three off the mark. Patterson knocked it off the board. Long rebound controlled by Gray. Marshall resets it now. John Moore, right baseline. Got around his man easily. Got around Silvers and played off really a pick by Big West Hart. 16 point game. Jeff Herman. He's not bashful to shoot it. That one's short. Rebounded by Gray. Marshall may have gotten a hand on that shot by Jeff Herman. And here comes the hurt. Herman too quick on the trigger. He forced that one. Brown with a quick three. Take Brown on transition three. And all of a sudden it's a 13 point ball game.
trying to get Marshall back into this thing. It's a 13-point contest. Doggett to Silvers. Missed it. Long rebound by Hightower. Here comes Marshall. And a steal by guess who? Silvers. <laughs> Darrell Jones blew the layup, and then Silvers on his back with a foul. Boy, Silvers has just got a knack of stepping into the passing lane. He has been doing that all night long, and Jones would have would love to get another look. This is after Silvers had already picked off the basketball. Ahead to Jones, he just takes his eye off the rim, and Hightower hustling back, able to get the rebound. And Silvers picks up the foul, his second personal. Wouldn't Silvers make a great free safety? Oh, the way he anticipates so well. Despite the size. There's the trap. They leave Gray open. He'll fire the 15-footer, and he nailed it. That 18-point lead is now 11. Doggett on the block to Patterson. His 12-footer short. Harden with a rebound. Here comes Marshall. And then Hightower lost the ball and credit Doggett with a great play defensively. He, Hightower lost the ball trying to avoid the charge. He had nowhere to go. Hightower turned his back. And the ball sailed out of bounds. Good play by Doggett. Hightower just had nowhere to go. Gray went for the steal, didn't get it. Shaheed Perkins. Yes. The freshman Perkins, and that was a big turnaround because Marshall had the ball down only 10. Now it's 13 again. Four big guys really banging inside. Four had his shot partially blocked, but now they call the foul on the arm by Trezell Silvers, and that's three on Silvers. So another look. Silvers. I don't see much of a foul there, but Silvers is whistled for his third personal, and that's a big, big foul. Alan LaForce has a decision to make, and he's making it. He's going to put in Justin McClellan to take out Trezell Silvers with 16.23 to go. A lot of time in the second half. John Moore hits the first of two shots, and that makes it a 12-point contest. Actually, Darrell Jones is coming up. Alan LaForce opting to play with fire. His best offensive and defensive player with three personal fouls at the 16-23 mark of the second half. Moore with a second of two free throws upcoming. Got it. 56-45. The lead is 11. It has been as big as 18 early in this half. Shaheed Perkins. Silver's open. Kind of startled him. Missed the shot. Kept alive. Finally taken by the big seven-footer Harden, who threw it into the East Tennessee bench. <laughs> yes, he did. I think Trezell Silvers was shocked when he saw himself so wide open. Nobody from Marshall stepped up to defend him when he got into the paint, and he just lost control of the basketball. Here's another look at the action inside. Harden wants to get the fast break started and just throws it away. Nice catch by Phil Powell. Over there. <laughs> Powell said, wait a minute, I don't play for you. Eleven point lead, just under 16 minutes. Great feed, Perkins to Patterson for the jam. Nice look away pass by Perkins and Patterson with the big put down. Again, the Buccaneer lead is 13. Sean Moore weaves around everybody. Patterson and Powell, and he got the bucket. Boy, he's the rubber band man. I don't know how he's finding room on that baseline, but he is a great reverse. We have a timeout, 15.35 to go in the ball game. 58-47, your score. Bucks in the lead. And we have a bit of a mini run, but here's a shot through the thundering herd's heart. Shahid Perkins, the look-away dish. Patterson, the big throwdown, and some style points. <laughs> I give him about a nine on that one. 11-point Buccaneer lead. They have the ball. A lot of time left, though. 15.35 to go. The Buccaneers are still playing with that tremendous intensity they played throughout the first half with. Shaheed Perkins, the freshman, brings it into the front court against Tink Brown. Marshall back of that man-to-man. -man. Great feed. Saved by McClellan. A three by Perkins is short. 
He's fouled, and that'll gi uh, give Perkins three shots. Foul came from outside the arc. So Perkins will get a trio of tries from the charity strike. We saw Marshall open up in a zone early in this half, but the three-point by Doggett brought him out quickly, didn't it? We haven't seen the zone since. Perkins with three opportunities at the line. There's number one. Just a 30% free throw shooter. A junior from Hagerstown Junior College, Wilmington, Delaware. Got that one. Got a little lean. Oh, he needed all the body English on that thing. One out of two for Perkins. So here's the rubber shot. Much better form. Two out of three for Perkins. Bucks continue to shoot very well from Charity Lane. Randy, another look at that East Tennessee State 2-3 matchup zone. Alan LaForce wants the Thundering Herd to beat them from the outside. But you only hit one of eight from the three-point line in the first half. You're not beating too many people. Harden. High towers open. Four with the offensive rebound. I think Doggett got a piece of that three attempt by Malik Hightower. Another reason East Tennessee State may be opting for that 2-3 matchup. They want to keep Silvers in the ballgame. He's got three personal fouls. Again, the lead is 11. Justin McClellan for East Tennessee State. Give and go down the lane. Great beat to Silvers, who got the two points. East Tennessee is State is just so much more effective when Tony Patterson is involved in the ball game. Pulling him outside really opened things up inside for Silvers to get the easy hoop. Buccaneers in that zone. That is really bothering Marshall. Marshall having to be more patient offensively. There's the backdoor feed to Hightower. Nice shot. You're not going to get that every time, but East Tennessee State gave it to him then, and the lead is again 11. Hightower did a nice job judging the jump. He couldn't get near the rim, caught it, and flicked in the five-footer. McClellan penetrates all the way. Missed the shot. Harden with a rebound after Patterson kept it alive, and Marshall can cut it to single digits with a bucket. Brown for three. No good, and Patterson's there for the board. East Tennessee State all over the defensive glass that time. Trezell Silvers just weaved his way in and got the uncontested jump shot. He's a slasher. Marshall cannot afford to trade baskets at this point. They need to get some hoops and get some defensive stops. 13-24 to go in the ballgame. Bob it across that zone. High tower for three. Short. And again, Patterson with a rebound. Look at Silvers. Take it to the hole. Missed the shot. Patterson for the tip. Patterson again. And the Buccaneers lead by 15. Harden can't be aggressive in there. He's got three personal fouls. Dwight Freeman realizes that. He's going right to the bench for Curtis Raymond and Sean Brailsford at the next opportunity. High tower penetrates. Baseline. All the way. Too hard. Trezell Silvers gets the rebound. That zone is really bothering the herd right here. Doggett into the front court. Buccaneers with 12.32. Pull it out. They say, hey, let's be a little patient. Round the horn they go. McClellan. And bounced it right to Sean Moore, who took it away from McClellan. Good hands by Moore. McClellan showed him the basketball, and he took it right away. Nice defensive play by Tony Patterson, who was giving up position to Gray, but denied the pass. Marshall gets it back with 27 on the shot clock and 12 minutes, 13 seconds to be played in the ballgame. East Tennessee State can afford to be patient now, Randy. They got a 15-point lead. And they're making Marshall be patient here when Marshall really would not rather, would probably rather do something else because of the zone. One thing East Tennessee State has been able to do here in the second half, they've totally taken away the fast break from Marshall. No easy hoops. Oh, what a behind-the-back dribble. Perkins. To Corey Johnson, kept alive, finally stolen away by Marshall. Curtis Raymond comes out of there. Brown got the layup. Good job by Curtis Raymond on the other end of the floor from Marshall, who took it away from Corey Johnson. But boy, what a great pass by Shaheed Perkins. 
He's made some nice passes tonight. He's had a good game. Now see when Patterson comes up top, how that opens things up inside for East Tennessee State. Getting players flashing to the goal, namely Silvers. Doggett with a penetration, but first the foul on Malik Hightower. Hightower got the foul and a finger in the eye for his trouble. Let's see if we can pick up the foul by Malik Hightower, the junior from Pittsburgh. And as Doggett went whipping by, he, he put his index finger right into Malik's left eye. But not too deeply, right? Time on the floor, 11.23 to go in the basketball game. 66-53, your score, the Bucks in the lead. And we'll be back right after this. C-State with a 13-point lead over the Thundering Herd here in Huntington. And Jim Donnan, the head football coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd, took his team to the 1AA National Championship game for the third consecutive year. And Todd Donnan, the quarterback of the Thundering Herd, right behind him. He knows a thing or two about basketball. He was an outstanding high school basketball player during his high school days down on Tobacco Road before heading to NC State. Jim Donnan has done such a super job coaching football here at Marshall. Marshall's had a great program for a long time, but Donnan got him that national championship. Shot no good by Robert Doggett. Hard to believe that you know, Marshall used to be known as a basketball school. Now football's kind of taken over the center stage. Tink Brown thought he had three, but they're only going to count two. Had to put on the line. The lead by the Bucks, 11, with 11 to go. Shaheed Perkins. Doggett with it. Railsford back in the ball game now, replacing Harden for Marshall. Perkins with a move. He's fouled, and he'll get two shots. And a strong move at that, Randy. He didn't have any hesitation about driving in to the bucket with Marshall defenders all around. Here's another look. He gets behind. Sheppy takes it right to Brailsford, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. He's had a good game tonight. He's hit three out of four free throws. Four out of five. He hits that one. You know, one guy we haven't talked about tonight for Alan LaForce is Andy Pennington. He played so well last year for East Tennessee State. It looks like he's going to be redshirted with a back problem, but this East Tennessee State backcourt would have a different look if he was healthy. Well, that hit every possible part of the rim and dropped through. That's what happens when your luck is going good for East Tennessee, and it is tonight. The lead 13 again, under 11 minutes to go. The Bucks pressuring full court. They're dropping back to a man-to-man -man now, so they're changing that defense around. Brown for three. Missed it. Hightower follows. No good. Tower again, no good. Tipped up and in. Silvers may have gotten a hand, but I think they credit Raymond with a bucket. East Tennessee State is allowing its opponents over 40 rebounds a game, and there you got a good indication why Buccaneers are just not blocking out on the defensive glass. Silvers penetrates. Johnson for three, no good. Patterson kept it alive. It goes out of bounds, and they'll give it to Marshall. And again, the thundering herd will come up the floor and a chance to cut that Buccaneer lead to single digits. Even though Corey Johnson didn't make that three-point shot, you really got an indication of why he's such a score. Really a quick release. 10-11 to go. Bucks by 11, and we'll be back as the herd has the ball in just a moment. And the Buccaneers going back to that full-court pressure, the thing that really got them that lead in the first half. Tink Brown has played a good game for Marshall, directing this offense. A lot of pressure on that young man's shoulders tonight with the loss of his father. And of course, the loss a couple of weeks ago with his backcourt mate, Frank Martin, stuff went. Sheppy misses the three, rebound to McClellan. Well, that was a big miss for Sheppy. Could have cut the lead to eight. As that one spun out, you should see the you should have seen the, the spin by Dwight Freeman on the Marshall bench. He thought he had three. Here's the trap. Perkins did a good job getting it away to Doggett. McClellan penetrates. Ten seconds on the shot clock. The jumper by Doggett. Missed. Out of bounds. It'll belong to East Tennessee State with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Fresh, frustrating set for the Thundering Herd. They played the good defense, got a bad shot up to the goal and could not control the rebound. Silvers will inbound. One thing I've noticed, the officials this year making players keep that shirt tail tucked in. Aren't they? Round the horn they go. Doggett. Perkins. 
They play catch with it, 9.15 to go in the ballgame. Oh, great pass. Nice shot by Silvers, but Patterson is there to follow it up. Patterson, Patterson continues to come, come up very, very big tonight. Marshall just can't get it to single digits, and East Tennessee drops back in that zone. With authority, too. Let's take a look. Wow. Hightower thought he had a good look at the basket. What he got a, a real good look at was the right hand of McClellan. No question about that. 8.51 to go. It's a 13-point Buccaneer lead. Marshall needs to do something quickly if they're going to do it. Buccaneers still in that 2-3 matchup. Harden's back in. He's the guy that carried him in the first half, and he's the guy that Dwight Freeman goes to here. In the lane, Moore missed the shot. He'll get two shots, as the foul will be against East Tennessee State. Sean Moore couldn't believe he missed that shot. He, he got the foul and had control of the basketball, but was just falling away from it. Here's We'll get two looks at this. Moore tried to put it up with the right hand, couldn't get it to go. Watch him falling one way, shooting the other, couldn't sink it. Bill Powell in the game. The free throw by Moore is good. Powell now with four personals. Dwight Freeman's team coming in on the uh, road 0-6, but they were 4-1 here at home. East Tennessee State, on the other hand, 1-5 on the road, so they were combined 1-11 away from home. The lead is 11. There's a steal. Tink Brown gets the ball. Here comes Marshall. Quickly. Moore for three. Missed it. Harden. A foul on Harden. And that's four on Wes Harden. Harden got the rebound, but they say he shot going for the ball. Here's another look. That expression by Dwight Freeman said it all. Yeah. He pushed Powell out of the way. Yeah. Pushed him with the right hand. And Moore. Barnhart. And Dwight Freeman's going to leave him in for at least for now. Oh, a three by Jeff Herman out of the corner. Just like that, the Bucks are back up by 14 points. Marshall just can't get it to single digits. Hart forced the shot. Rebound Doggett. Under eight minutes to go. East Tennessee whipping it around the horn. Junior Floyd to Powell. Here's Herman again. Bang! Jeff Herman. And the East Tennessee State bench is up. They love it. And a timeout. 7.31 left in the ballgame. It's East Tennessee with a big 17-point lead over Marshall. And we'll be back to the Henderson Center in a moment. Tennessee State with a 17-point lead, and one of the big reasons they've been able to maintain that lead in the second half, Jeff Herman drains a three. He's got a dozen points, and this is not a replay. This is another shot from outside the arc. Herman with two big ones. He's got a dozen on four three-pointers. He's been very <laughs> economical shooting tonight. He's in there. Part of the top of that 2-3 matchup. Moore with a drive. Good job by Sean Moore off the left hand around Junior Floyd. 76-61. Marshall's cut the lead on a couple of occasions, Randy, to 11 points, but they haven't been able to get that defensive stick they need. Good job by Junior Floyd. Alan LaForce thinks it belongs to him, or should belong to him, but Marshall gets it back as it went off Junior Floyd, according to the official. Under seven minutes to go. Big trip up the floor, as they all are now for Marshall, as they're down 15. Tink Brown looks for help. There's the guy they need to get it to, Sean Moore, who's kept him in at the last few minutes. Tink Brown off. 
off the glass. Nice touch by Tink Brown. Brown is becoming much more aggressive offensively. 13-point lead. Good ball movement, East Tennessee State. They clear it out for Doggett. 15 on the shot clock. Hightower squares up with Doggett. Here's Herman. Seven seconds on the shot clock. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Doggett with two seconds. Missed it. Oh, what a tip in by Phil Powell as he had position over Sean Moore. Perfect use of the shot clock. 15 point lead again. The ball goes out of bounds. Touch last by East Patterson, Silvers, and Shahid Perkins all check in for East Tennessee State. With a shot clock running down for East Tennessee State. Doggett was able to fire it up there and Powell with a big offensive rebound. And the lead is 15 again. Sean Moore drives, fires it up off the glass, no good. Silvers with a rebound. Wild shot. Moore out of control. East Tennessee will be very patient. Almost a steal by Troy Gray, the 6'6 junior from Franklin, Louisiana. Good hustle. He's played awfully well tonight for Marshall off the bench. Alan LaForce and the East Tennessee State Buccaneers have been in control of this game from nearly the opening tap. They raced out to a 9-2 lead, and thanks to some big, big threes in the first half and some steals, they've kept Marshall at bay all night. Finally, a miss from three by Jeff Herman, and then the foul on Shaheed Perkins. That will send Marshall to the free throw line. It's not what East Tennessee wants because they'll give Marshall a chance to score with a clock stop. Here's another look at that one. Moore all alone under the bucket. And a silly foul by Perkins will put Moore. Uh, check that. Marshall is not in the one-on-one -on -one yet. East Tennessee State doing everything right. They've only got 14 fouls at the 520 mark of the second half. On the road, too, which is surprising. In the lane, Gray spinning. Missed the shot. Good shot. It just wouldn't go. And Patterson is there for the rebound. Again, Marshall getting only one crack at the bucket. Harden will check back in at the next opportunity as Dwight Freeman uses up every trick of the book to try to get back in this one. And there's the pushing foul against the herd. And you can sense now, Randy, that East Tennessee State is going to start milking the clock a little bit. We're inside of five minutes to go. They want to get 30 seconds off that shot clock on every possession. Railsford just knocked Perkins to the floor. Oh, great feed, but a great play by Harden to break it up. Touched it last, the Bucks get it back. Silvers had an easy two if Harden doesn't break that pass up. Boy, Silvers has played a lot of basketball in the second half with three personal fouls and never picked up the fourth. Harden again knocks it away. Talk about my tie. Look at Dwight Freeman. <laughs> you know, John Chaney at Temple, when he wears a tie and they lose the game, he just throws the tie away. That gets expensive after a while. Yeah. The trailing jumper by Patterson won't go. Rebound to Harden. Here comes Marshall. Down 15. Nick Brown looking for something. Anything. Hightower. Tried to find Gray, and East Tennessee State has done such a great job cutting off the passing lanes and denying the ball. And Tony Patterson knocked that one away. Sean Moore with a fake. The baseline, the reverse. Patterson fouled him, and Moore will get two shots. I think Sean Moore wanted to go for the big reverse dunk, and Patterson would, had, would have known none of it. As we take a look at the replay, Sean Moore continues to find room on the baseline. And yeah, he was thinking about that 180. Patterson with the foul, and Sean Moore will go back to the free throw line. Patterson's third foul. He got two quickly in the first half, played well throughout uh, the rest of the first half and this half, and just now got his third. 
Shows you how important when he is available to play, not in foul trouble, East Tennessee State can do a lot of things. I like him. He's got good size. He runs the court well. He showed tonight that he's a good passer and has a nice shot from in the paint. But he has had some games this year where he's frankly just disappeared. I think a lot of the players for East Tennessee State on occasion have disappeared, but they were all here tonight. John Moore got the roll, and the lead is 13 with 4.24 to go. Marshall picking up the pressure in the backcourt a little bit. You know, these guys from East Tennessee State really had a hard time getting back from Las Cruces, New Mexico the other night. Their flight in Atlanta was canceled, and they had a five-hour layover to get back to Johnson City. Away from the ball, the foul will be against Troy Gray. And Jeff Herman will go to the line, as that will put the Buccaneers in the one-and-one. And if you are East Tennessee State, the guy you want at the free-throw line, as you look at the three-point percentages, is Jeff Herman. Yes. And I'm answering my producer on the air. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Jeff Herman will get one and one. Herman on the year hits 82% from the foul line. Closing in on his average. What a difference East Tennessee State has made at the free throw line tonight. They've been knocking him down all night long. Missed one free throw in the first half. And every time Marshall tries to make a run and they put the Bucks back on the free throw line, they have really come up big. 15-point lead again. We're under four minutes to go. And the gray, nice shot. Took it right to Silvers and got it to go off the window. I don't think you're going to see East Tennessee State foul too much down low. They don't want to give them three-point opportunities. They'll give them if they, if they earn it and get down there, the Bucks will give it to them. Quietly, Marshall has pulled back to within 13. If they could get a defensive stop and can a three, they would be as close as they have been since the first half. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Shaheed Perkins drops it to Silvers with three seconds, and boy, they drained every second for what it was worth. Didn't they? Did it again. Marshall just cannot get a defensive stop. This is about as well as I've seen Trezell Silvers play, and I've seen him play some big games over the past few years. Under three minutes to go. Bucks with a 15-point lead and the ball. They are in control here at the Henderson Center. This is a little bit surprising. Patterson, he misses. Tink Brown with a rebound. Gray for three. He got it. Big three by Troy Gray. He's showing some range from outside the arc. The lead is 12 with 2.20 to go. Shaheed Perkins, there's the trap. Threw it off the hands of Marshall, and East Tennessee State gets it back. Checking in Junior Floyd for East Tennessee State. Tony Patterson will sit down. Boy, that young man has played well tonight. Not a lot of points, not a lot of stats, but he's been in on some big play. And we have a timeout. Two minutes, 13 seconds left to be played in this one. It's a 12-point Buccaneer lead. And we'll be back right after this. 12-point Buccaneer lead. They're in control and 2.13 left. Marshall will probably start fouling and hope that the old East Tennessee State free throw shooters show up, not the ones that have played in the first 38 minutes of this game. Saved by Doggett. Everything has gone the Buccaneers way this evening. They spread the floor. There's the chase and the foul by Malik Hightower. And the Bucs go to the line. So it's time to play whom do you foul. And Doggett will go to the line. A 55% free throw shooter on the year. 
Well, if you look at percentages, the only one you wouldn't foul would be Jeff Herman. So you're pretty wide open out there. But the way the Bucks have done at the free throw line tonight, you can throw the books out the window. Patterson will check back in for Junior Floyd. Patterson to get a little rebounding strength on the free throw line. As Doggett goes to the line, the 6'5 junior transfer from Wake Forest. And he made it. Looks like Alan LaForce is closing in on another victory, Randy, and he's really had a, a great career in Johnson City. 76 and 30 overall, 71% winning percentage. That's the best among the Southern Conference coaches. Two for two for Doggett. You know, these East Tennessee State coaches said all this team needed was a little confidence. Well, they're 3-0, and they're going to come away with a big road win here in Huntington. Malik Hightower with a three-point opportunity coming up for Marshall. Can make it an 11-point game if he hits here. And Marshall's still not, uh, East Tennessee's still not out of the woods yet. Now, if Hightower makes the free throw, it'll be an 11-point lead. But, you know, East Tennessee State really took Malik Hightower out of his game tonight. He didn't get the shots he wanted. He, he, this one he really forced, but he got it to go. Just a great athletic move, putting it up and in with the left hand. And Hightower, who's a 91% free throw shooter, misses. Tony Patterson with authority gets the rebound. Bucks run the floor. What a move. A 360 by Silvers. He doesn't get the shot, but Marshall comes back. High power on the other end. That's as close as Marshall's been in the half. They're down 10. And the foul by Tink Brown with a minute 32 to go will send Jeff Herman to the line. And that will be, if that's number nine, he'll have a one and one. If it's number 10, Herman will have two shots. We'll see. When you look at this East Tennessee State team, you have to look at a complete game that Trezell Silvers played. Silvers did it at both ends of the floor tonight. In the big run early that the Buccaneers made to get to the lead, he had many, many steals, and then offensively, he's just had another solid game. That young man calmly sinks the first free throw. Jeff Herbert played quite a game, too. Relatively quiet until he hit those big threes back to back about midway of this half and kind of put it away for East Tennessee State. Pushed the lead at the time back out to 17 points. Boy, he's just on cruise control now. He's really feeling it. The lead is 12 and at 30 to go. Tink Brown, East Tennessee chasing, pressing, putting pressure on. Not going to give them an easy shot, but they don't want to foul. Here's Brown for three. Moore got the rebound and he put it up and in. Again, the lead is 10 with a minute 15, and Marshall wants a timeout. So a timeout for the herd is Dwight Freeman still coaching, still battling. He's down 10. And East Tennessee's got the ball, but a lot of time left with a three-point shot in. But the thing is, Dave, they got to hit him. Yeah, they got to start making those threes, and East Tennessee State has shown no propensity not to make their free throws. They, they've just done everything right so far tonight in the game. And Alan LaForce is really fired up about something over there. I'm not so sure if he thinks uh, Marshall may have called timeout before they got the ball in. That, that might have been what he was talking about, but we'll have to check and see. Anyway, he chased the officials all the way out on the floor. After Sean Moore had the putback, Tink Brown was right here in front of our broadcast location, and he was off clearly signaling for the timeout moments after the ball went through the basket. Well, that may not have been what he was talking about. That was just my guess. But one thing Allen didn't want to get here was a technical, which would give <laughs> Marshall oh. two shots plus give him the ball back. Well, East Tennessee State has not played like a team with a 5-8 and eight record tonight. Okay, if we get three more. And they have not played like a team that carried a five-game road losing streak into this contest either. Well, the thing is, if East Tennessee State hangs on the last minute 15 to this 10-point lead, they will be... They're not going to look at that 6-8 and eight overall record. They're going to look at the fact that they're 3-0 and oh in the Southern Conference and right up there with UTC, provided the Moccasins won at home over Davidson. And that was no piece of cake for Matt McCarthy's team tonight. Preseason coaches poll had UTC defending their league championship with East Tennessee State second and Marshall in third place. And the Herd really have to kick it into overdrive to get up that high in the league standings. Jeff Herman, who is perfect for the night at the free throw line with 4-4, four, four, will go back. And Raymond checks out. And Gray 
checks in for Marshall. And if you're Dwight Freeman, maybe it's time to think about putting somebody else on the line besides Jeff Herman. He's the guy that'll bring it up the floor because he's the guy Alan LaForge wants at that free throw line. Automatic. Jeff Herman played at Tyner High School in Chattanooga, right under the shadow of UTC. Went to Austin P. transferred to East Tennessee State. He's looking forward to the first matchup with the Moccasins. He finally misses one. That'll be coming up in a week and a half. Three-pointer cuts it to eight. The miss by Brown. The rebound by Doggett with over a minute to go. And then there's the foul on Sheffy. That was probably a pretty good foul, Randy, because the way Doggett was able to cut through the defense, suddenly it was a three-on-one. Well, with a minute and four seconds to go, Bucks by 11. Let's take a look at the Budweiser Buccaneer player of the game, and it is no question that Trezell Silvers has played one of his best games as a Buccaneer. Silvers had a big, big night at both ends, showing a good range on the follow away off the baseline that goes. And Malik Hightower, well, he'll be the first to admit that this wasn't his best game, but he is our player of the game. Right. High tower. Spinning. Adjusts his shot in midair. Gets it to go off the left hand. But ironically, he was unable to convert that three-point play. The 91% free throw shooter missed. It's been that kind of night for Marshall. 12-point game. 64 ticks of the clock left. His dog at the line. They got it. Marshall unable to recapture the magic they showed in the first half of their game with UTC last weekend where they shot 65% from the first half, had a 16-point lead at one point on UTC. I think the injury to Sean Moore probably did as much to put that team in the doldrum as anything. They, they did not win at Western Carolina without him, and they just did not play real well here with him tonight. Sean told us before the game that he felt physically he could have played against Western Carolina in Cullowee on Monday night, but Dwight Freeman opted to sit him out in that game to bring him back in this game, and frankly, he showed some rust early on. Alan LaForce is jawing at the officials as if he were down by 13 instead of ahead by 13. <laughs> He's still coaching it. Carrying on over there. Silvers, automatic. Buccaneer team doing everything right tonight. But as these coaches would tell you, it's about time. Silvers with a second of two upcoming. Missed it. Rebound by Moore. It's a 14-point Buccaneer lead with 50 seconds to go. Silvers almost had another steal. Tink Brown, they look for somebody to shoot the three. Sheppy drives, missed the shot. Tell you what, that wasn't Sheppy, that was Elliot Dorsey. Walk-on is in the game for the Thundering Herd. It looks a lot like Shep. Yeah, they do. For a haircut. 25 seconds to go. The Bucks play catch. They can just about milk the shot clock all the way down. And Marshall pretty much letting him do it here down by 14. Elliot Dorsey getting some time here in the last minute of play. He had to miss the, the Western Carolina game because he's a Jaeger scholar at Marshall. He was required to be in classes for the first day of the second semester. Tony Patterson steps out of bounds, but it's not going to matter because the Bucks, with seven seconds to go, have locked up their first road win. A steal. The Bucks missed the shot. And that'll do it. The Buccaneers of East Tennessee are still perfect in Southern Conference play as they come to Huntington and win a big road game, beating Marshall 90 to 76 here at the Henderson Center. For Dave Weekly in the Henderson Center in Huntington, this is Randy Smith saying so long, everybody. The final again. The Bucks a winner, 90 to 76 over Marshall.